everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today's matchup could be a drag -em out brawl as both teams rank in the top 10 in fewest yards allowed. The Steelers are number one in defensive yards allowed, and they go up against the Browns, who will need to be sharp on offense. So for the call of this week 17 matchup, let's send it out to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and James Davis. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, the curtain falls on the regular season, and we've got a good one in store between the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we look at this Steeler ball club entering play. And losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home. And they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they've been as hot as anyone. The win last week makes it 9 out of 10. The results are hard to argue. If there's a team better suited for the postseason right now, I don't know who they are. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Now a man who was briefly a stealer himself. This is LeGarrette Blount. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. shotgun he'll look to throw and the Steeler pressure too much here he's gonna go down they'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack now it's third down and I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive this is third and long out of the gun they'll look to throw over the middle he's got Watkins It'll be a pickup of 16, but they'll remain short of the marker, and it's fourth down. And now here's a man who punted collegially in this stadium for the Pitt Panthers, Andy Lee, to kick it away. I don't know how many times, not just in my playing career, but you and I working together, have we ever heard a coach say, you know, I just don't have that play on my call sheet. And that's really what we had here. That was a big hole they were trying to get out of. Yeah, big gain still a place to go, though. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that officially. Give him 15, and out will come the offense as they take over. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Eric Kendricks leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. They'll look to throw. Gets this one to Le'Veon Bell. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Let's go! On the ground, this is Derrick Henry. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Let's go! 
Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. He was looking for the running back, Derrick Henry. And that'll bring up second down. They'll look to throw here. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. This is Henry. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. They'll look to throw here on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And that's a great example of ball skills right there. and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. And the Browns getting set to go. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive? Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. They're going to look to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. LeGarrette Blunt was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. They'll come out in the pistol. Now a carry for Blunt. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. And a loss of three to bring up four. That call was actually a linebacker's dream. A draw play when you're blitzing. Because they're trying to set up and fool you into thinking it's a pass. But because they're doing so, they're actually opening up a crease for you to get through and get to the ball carrier. An excellent play for the linebacker. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. Now Roethlisberger, and he will find his man on the outside. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. They were ready for what the defense was showing. They had prepared for that look, recognized it, went straight to the air, got the first. Well done. Love the recognition, because you can prepare for everything. You can watch the tape and put together your game plan. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. And the Browns offense back out there ready to take over. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game. And that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. 
So who will step up here? We'll see. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Here we go. Watkins alone on the left side. Now back to throw. Blitz coming and down he goes. They get him that time thanks to the safety blitz as he sank for a loss of four. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. And he dumps it off to Blunt. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the pick ball before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. They'll run again with Blunt. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. That's a good explosive run right there on the draw play. And in order for it to be successful, you've got to have some good faking going on and people having a nice little time clock in their head to understand how it all knits together. The offensive line really showing a pass set. They're going to pass block. Maybe to draw in those defensive linemen, have them come up field, and then get past them, hand the ball off to the running back. And oftentimes, he bypasses the guys headed for the quarterback, thinking they're going to get a sack, and gets himself into the secondary. And in this case, he picked up really nice yardage. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And his kick here is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. So after slogging through a scoreless first quarter, we have action on the scoreboard. A field goal makes it 3-0. Well, with these two offenses, we weren't going to stay 0-0 forever, were we? I'm not sure that this opens the floodgates, but I doubt that's the last scoring we're going to see. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They come out here in the eye. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game, as we just saw there. On second down, Roethlisberger dancing to his left. And he whips that one incomplete there. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. Back to Heinz Field after this. Reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. <laughs> that one good for 10 yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Marquette King to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. 
Fielded at the 20. It's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, try to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. On play action, they'll throw. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. It looked like he might have had a window there, but the rhythm was just a little bit off. Certainly was, because everything that has to come together to get a pass completed. Yeah, you're right. The sink just wasn't there. Now blown. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. The defense won that play so fast, and I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second. And this thing is blown up defensively. They will not get a throw off on the trick play, and that'll go down as a sack. Offense trying to avoid stalling out, facing a third and ten. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. And he's going to let it go deep. And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. And now here comes the Steelers' defense. Once more. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. Let's see if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here, see if they can force another three and out. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. That late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's try and get some more points. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And they'll get 32 yards there. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal. Red zone opportunity. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver in the final seconds of the first half. And the Steelers have taken the lead. Well, someone has a sense of the dramatic here, don't they? Scoring this late in the half to take the lead going into the locker room. Now they just don't want to misstep misfortune on the next kickoff because there's still a little bit of time left on that clock. Yeah, you do have to bring that up, don't you? In the NFL, every play is critical. If you give up something cheap there, all that advantage they just gained goes right out the window. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away this is fielded a couple yards deep 
And he'll probably wish he reconsidered here. It'll cost him 10 yards now with a new rule as he's down at the 15-yard line. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. The drive starts with a handoff to Blum. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17. Jeez, I don't even want to let their guys get a drink of water. All right, third quarter, let's get to it. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done they're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Let's go! 319! 319! He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And it's complete to Antonio Gates. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Do you get the sense, Brandon, that people are trying to retire Antonio Gates? They keep thinking this is almost the end of the line, and then he keeps making catches like the one we just saw there. He's the old reliable, you're right, just one of nine players in the NFL with 100 or more touchdowns. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll look to throw. Looking for his tight end gates, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? I mean, you're exactly right. It takes a fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, oh, boy, you wish you hadn't. A look at the offense now here, coming back. Back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. the lone running back and he'll get it up the middle and this one goes nowhere losing yardage on the play back at the 46 it's a loss of two there bringing out second down partner i think the easy thing now would be to just abandon the run and start throwing the football at all costs but i've been in so many games where it doesn't work running the ball it doesn't work running the ball and then something pops and now you get something going i'm not so sure to just abandon your game plan this early in the second half wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game. But one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe getting better line splits and spreading the field. I think that would be a great strategy, right? Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. A big play that time for Cleveland. 41 yards. Uh, they've been struggling in the passing game. Do you like the aggressiveness there? I mean, it worked on that play, but do you like it? I do because a lot of the time you're struggling because your passing lanes are clogged. That usually happens when you're throwing the ball underneath. People start to press up on you. Push them deep. 
find some space and open things up again. Being aggressive there, I think, will pay off for them. They'll run it here with Blown. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. All right, Brandon, you know me as well as anyone. You know I don't usually advocate abandoning things during a game, but here we are in the second half. I think it's time to change things up. Let the running game go a little bit. Let's get to the passing game, and if you still want to get in the hands of the runner, maybe you swing it to him, throw it to him a little bit, try it that way. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it. I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And his kick is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one. Take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return for the Browns TD. And a big turning point here in the second half, Charles, after that play. All you're trying to do is change momentum, flip things around for your team. You're just trying to take the ball away. How about when you take it away and score? That really changes things. So they're going to go for two. zone to extend the lead by two more and boy things switched on a dime here the fumble recovery for the touchdown and also a two-point try on top successful that feels like a moment pick it up on a fumble return take it the other way for a touchdown that's demoralizing for a team to have it happen against them so the offense just says you know something let's add to it pile on top go for two now while their heads are down and he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They're going to hurry back to the line now. On second down, here's Roethlisberger toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe-tapping, and, of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, and Henry's hit. He lost the football. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. 
Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what Put you your do foot best. On the exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. They come out here in the eye. Again, here's Blunt. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner and the tackler was there right away for a loss of yardage. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Let's go! the gun they'll look to throw under pressure he's gonna go down look at this way back around the 43 it'll be a loss of eight on the sack and it's gonna lead him to fourth down here's Andy Lee now he's been terrific so far you never want to give up a sack from the O-line's perspective they hate it for several reasons especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket oh no doubt they have a ton of pride and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean they want that uniform with no grass stains no dirt nothing on it but it's really really difficult you're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground and Pittsburgh getting set to take the field Henry well, past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. Four yards remaining now on second down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Running left, it's Henry. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. See if they stay on the ground for second down. And they're going to speed things up here. Now Roethlisberger. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. On second down, Roethlisberger toward the sideline, and look at that catch, dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part catching the football right whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it comes together with the legs in this case the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch and a great job by our crew on the camera shot love when you see the grass or on the field turf those rubber pellets flying up great catch and now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up now Roethlisberger eluding the pressure right that is caught at the seven. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. They come out here in the eye. Now Bell. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Second down, goal to go from the six. They'll try again with Bell. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. Well, after last week, where he kept finding the end zone, what do you have, two touchdown runs? Yep. He's got to be just a tad frustrated here 
close, but he hasn't gotten in. Maybe they give him another shot. We'll see. Well, I would think so. I think he's built up that type of equity, but the guys on the other side of the ball know it, too. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Here we go. It's Roethlisberger on. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Sammy Coates, his first touchdown on the year. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This is taken at his four. Who with a juke. A strong running. <laughs> and now the Browns offense trots back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Yard line. The yardage-wise, he's in the top handful of backs in the league so far this season. A great run there. He's going to love that standing when it comes to contract time. But even more so, his team loves it because he gives them an identity and sets a tone. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got it first and ten as they search for a go-ahead score. He'll be down at the 30. Personal foul. Placement. Defense. And the dreaded face mask penalty. That's going to cost him 15 yards. And it's such a dangerous play. Body going one way and then your head gets yanked back the other. 15 yards is the right call. They come up in an offset eye. Here's Blunt. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Shift together here from the D-line. Come on, let's go! Brad 38! Brad 38! They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. LeGarrett Blunt, touchdown number 15 on the year. And the Browns have moved out in front. And there's the go-ahead touchdown, and so likely will kick an extra point. But to me, I'm looking forward. Special teams now with your kickoff, and then your defense, that's where the pressure shifts. Yeah, because there's plenty of time left on that clock. Anytime you're over a minute in the NFL, there's a chance. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Did they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really looked clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Well, that plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right, the overall game sheet. 
but you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things, hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter, and they got a big one. Yeah, it's such a close game, a very big one. Well, they got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle an out route. That, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. And he's got his man on the out route. Give him 10 yards on the pickup and that'll make it second and a foot or so. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like and he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell, his 19th touchdown now on the season. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Love the excitement we've got going here. They just scored the touchdown. They're down by one. How much fun is it now to figure out the possibilities? Kick the extra point and tie it. Go for two if they're really feeling in a gambling mood. What do you do in this situation? I think you kick the PAT. Yeah, I do too. Kick it, get my defense ready, and try and stop them one more time. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. And a loose football over the middle. He's got Watkins. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Completes it right side to Doxon. A gain of six there on first. And as the fourth quarter winds down here, we're all even. And no one wants this game to extend. They want to go ahead and win it right now. Back to throw. He's got time. Wide open receiver complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Fresh set of downs here. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. 18 yards on the pickup there. And it'll give the Browns a first down. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is... And the Steelers signal for another timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. Two for two on the afternoon, and a third would win it. And his kick is indeed good, and they have regained the lead. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done.
So for the Browns, they'll wrap up the campaign an impressive 15-1. And, and they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Pittsburgh, this loss will mean they finish the season right at 500 at 8-8. Eight and, eight. and they'll get the extra week to think about this one as they return to action in two weeks' time.